Good morning, guys. My name is Dr. Michael Jill, pharmacist with Health the Health Solutions, and I'd like to welcome you to today's session of Flip the Script. Today, we're going to be talking about allergies. And as always, I'd like to start with a background with some statistics on allergies. So these are from the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. And um, in the United States, more than 50 million Americans suffer from allergies. Allergies are also the sixth leading cause of chronic illness in the United States. So as with many disease states we've discussed, this is also a very important topic because there are many Americans dealing with this. So how, what causes allergies? So there are really two factors. One is genetic. So really it's, there's a genetic predisposition where you can inherit it really from, you know, looking at your family. So you inherit it, it's family history and that sort of thing. The other one is environmental. So along with that genetic predisposition, say you may have dealt with chronic mold in your home growing up or in a certain diet or had chronic bacterial and viral infections, all these things could play a role in, in allergies or in developing allergies. So let's talk about the disease breakdown and kind of what happens with allergies. So when you, um, so you have an antigen, so an allergen or antigen, that binds to IgE, which is basically an antibody that is bound to mast cells and basophils that are just, those are types of white blood cells. When that binds, those cells then release histamine and other things as well, but we'll primarily discuss histamine. When histamine's released, it leads to a lot of physiological responses, things like dilation of blood vessels, so that's your vasodilation, capillary permeability, you have um, hypersecretion of, in the body, so things like, um, you end up with things like runny nose, um, watery eyes. You also see um, sensitivity, kind of nerve, sensory nerve um, sensitivity, so you end up with things like itching. So as a result of that, of those, or that histamine, it really um, sheds light on the signs and symptoms. And I'll go ahead and recap and kind of lay those out. So again, we mentioned so itchy, watery eyes, you can have things like sneezing, um, you could have hives on the skin. So, you know, again, you know, your dilated vessels have those wheels, those hives that can be itchy. You can also have wheezing. There's another thing that histamine can do is lead to smooth muscle contraction. So in the bronchi, you know, in the lungs, the bronchi and bronchioles, you can have that muscle can spasm and so you end up with wheezing. Um, and then in severe cases, you can even have things or have anaphylaxis, which could lead to severely low blood pressure or severe wheezing, cardiac and respiratory arrest. So definitely very serious um, in that case and not something to take lightly. So those are kind of the signs and symptoms. So now let's look at kind of uh, the diagnosis of it. So there's quite a few things. So looking at diagnosis, you could always have a clinical evaluation. They might evaluate, say, yes, that's, oh, wow, that's allergic reaction. Just look at the clinical picture. You could have a skin test. Sometimes they'll do that. They might do um, a blood test looking at, you know, just levels of that antibody, looking at other things, other types of blood cells, something called eosinophils. They might look at that. But those are kind of the screening tools, and those aren't always, you know, going to be completely decisive in terms of diagnosis. So you also really want to look at a history. That can be the most helpful because, you know, while those can, while screening tools are great, sometimes that's not always the full picture deciding, you know, the diagnosis. So things, so with that history, you want to look at things like previous triggers or treatments or, you know, when did this develop? You know, were they able to treat it? Did they take a medication and over the counter or, some, or do something or avoid the trigger and it subsides? So looking at all those, those pieces really can give you the full picture, you know, seeing what happened. So that's kind of your diagnosis. So then kind of the treatments. So looking at treatments, so traditionally there's quite a lot of treatments. So we have things like H1 blockers, so your antihistamines, obviously blocking that histamine. So things like Benadryl, diphenhydramine, that would be kind of your, I guess, more traditional, your um, first generation, kind of sedating antihistamines. And then we have your less sedating, so things like Claritin, Loratadine. And we also have corticosteroids, so we could have things like Lonase or Bluticasone, more of a nasal. And we also have oral. Uh, as well. There are, there are even um, eye drops as well, so we're not going to get into all those today. Other thing we have, which can be the same way or same routes, um, oral 
nasal and kind of as an eye drop so or ocular so that could be again antihistamines we also have mast cell stabilizers things like chromalin that kind of prevent the release histamine um, that's also you know the same routes as well um, and then there's also things like immune therapy in certain rare cases but I'm not going to get into the really the immune therapy today but those are just some things there just to keep in mind I think I mentioned just to, for completeness I mentioned that um, low nasal fluticasone and nasal steroid we have oral oral like prednisone as well so that's something else that we might take in severe cases um, so that's kind of there. So now, and then, you know, with symptoms, we also have decongestants. So you could look at things like, um, things like Sudafed, for example, is oral. And then there are, are nasal decongestants um, as well. Again, I'm not going to get into those uh, today. Um, and then, so from there, let's kind of now transition a little bit into kind of prevention, kind of the non-pharmacologic prevention. So obviously you know avoiding the triggers if you know you have a trigger avoid them and just to kind of put into place the main triggers we tend to see are things like pollen animal dander um dust mites and mold so those kind of the four things so obviously avoiding those triggers is important keeping the house clean is important you know even down those animal danders keeping mold down with cleaning those bathrooms vacuuming, dehumidifiers to keep moisture out of the area, keeping pets in a different room, you know, if that's an issue, avoiding foods if foods are a trigger, so all those kinds of things, you know, just to keep it, really just avoiding those triggers is what all that kind of amounts to, or keeping the triggers away. Um, so in terms of non-pharmacological, in terms of the alternative treatments, so those, so one is raw honey, raw local honey, um, that can be great, a great um, treatment option. The other thing, a couple, a few other treatments that are good as well. Lavender is a natural antihistamine, as is lemon. It's great to combine lemon and lavender because while they're both natural antihistamines, lavender, interestingly, tends to be more like that type, that um, first generation or very sedating. Lemon is actually uplifting, so that can be a great combination to kind of counteract it. Um, the other thing you can add on to that is peppermint. Peppermint is, can be decongesting, and I mentioned that decongestant as well. Also, if it, you're dealing with more of the chest, like the more of a wheezing or a chest congestion, eucalyptus, essentially along with that peppermint, eucalyptus is actually an expectorant, so it'll break up that mucus. It also works well in kind of that lower respiratory and those bronchioles to relax those, that smooth muscle that's spasming. So I think that really concludes um, our episode of Flip the Script today. Obviously, if you have any questions, definitely give us a call at 336-337-2794. You can also email us via the website at www.hepsvahealthsolutions.com. Again, thank you for tuning in. I hope to see all of you next week, and I hope you have a great rest of your Monday. Bye-bye.